Selling the right item at the right time is a big reason that things sell when they do. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that are selling right now because it's that time of the year. So let's hop over right now and show you some interesting, odd, and bizarre items that do sell for us for some good money. So the first item here is a vintage NOS Kmart brand shirt. Now I picked up a whole bunch of these at a thrift store quite a little while ago. Now we've been selling these ever since I first listed them. I think I have just a couple of these left I sell them on average for around $30 a shirt, all the way up to the $57.50, which we got for some of them the day we listed them. So the day I listed them, we got our money back on these items. It's just that time of year. People are buying oddball stuff for gifts as well. This is sealed. It's in the package, and it's ready to go. It did sell for $32.50. Here's another oddball paper item. This sold for the full price, $39.99. This is a wrapper from the 1876 Paris Expo, which was a World's Fair. This would have been for a cigarette, a box of cigarettes. Interesting, unique item. Always goes very well. I've got a dollar into it at the very most, and I sold a bunch of the items I got with the same purchase, and we've already made all of our money back. So this is basically all profit. Now, this is a German pressed set. It's imported over to here. It did sell for $23.25, a dollar purchase somewhere at best. Frankie Yankovic is a very well-known polka player. He is not related to Weird Al. A lot of people think he's related to him. He is not. This one did sell for $46.50 plus shipping. These earlier ones, these earlier polka ones on the Columbia Disc label go for some good money all the time. We've sold some in the hundreds, around $4.50 by Yankovic as well. Here's another record, Miss Helen Tricks. Now, this is a one-sided one. There are no songs on the back. It's basically flat with an embedded sticker into it, kind of like a label with a price on it. This one sold for around $27 plus shipping. So, nice sale as well. Now, jewelry we sell all the time. And this one's Mark WL for Walter Lample. Very nice piece, $46.50 it sold for. It's got rhinestones, the whole works. It's vintage, 1940s. Very nice piece. I paid a dollar for it. Now, I don't mind letting stuff sit. It has to be the right person online at the right time to sell most of what we have up. Lots of stuff up means we sell lots of stuff as well. Now, here's a Weiss piece. Now, Weiss pieces sell for us pretty well right off the bat. This is a piece I paid $2 for. It did sell for $35.65. Lots of nice rhinestones. Well marked also. It has Weiss marked in the back of it. Just one of those sales I like to get. Something you put up, you forget about it, and just wait for it to sell. Now, I do put stuff on discount, and I do markdowns as well, and that's where quite a few items have sold through. Now, here's a gold-filled photo locket. Very nice piece. Now, this piece has a date on it, 1903. It did sell for $39.99 plus shipping. I got a dollar into it. I paid a dollar for like 17 different vintage pieces like this. It has some wear, can be buffed up, can also be melted down because there is gold in it, gold-filled. And gold's pretty high. It's around $2,000 an ounce if you're unaware. Now, religious items I sell quite a bit of also. This is a pendant, a medal of some sort. It did sell for $21.39. This is a quarter purchase. This is one of those bins or baskets at checkout you see sometimes at Goodwill and stuff with just a bunch of stuff in it, sometimes keychains and things along that line. This was in there for a quarter, $21 and some odd change we got back out of it. Buy this kind of thing all the time. They're very good sellers this time of year. Right now, these sell very well, as well as around Easter. The religious items, Christmas, Easter season, are where we sell most of the higher dollar ones, better ones to say. Rosary as well. Now, this one's silver. It's not sterling. It's just silver. $35.65 for this one. Nice beads on it. Um, they're carved wood, basically. It's a vintage piece, probably 40s or 50s as well. I pay a dollar for most rosaries, up to $2. And again, I've paid more than that if they were sterling or something specific. Now, we saw a lot of little booklets, and these little booklets I can get for a quarter all the way up to probably about a dollar, I think, is the most I spend on any of these. One of those quarter pickups, it's a small piece, 
and it did sell for some decent money. And here's another booklet. This one I did spend a dollar on, and it sold for around $22 plus shipping. It was up for about nine months. No big deal. Happy to sell it. Now, postcards I do fairly well with. Here's a brown coat Santa Claus, right time of year, right person on, $31.50 on this one, dollar pickup. So I never pay more than a dollar for these. These illustrations, this sort of thing, like the Christmas ones, for a dollar, I'll buy almost any one I see, as long as it's circa 1910-ish, 20-ish at the very latest. Another Christmas one, $17 and some change. It has glitter mica. The lettering Merry Christmas has mica, which is ground up stones actually glued to the face of this. Nowadays, they use glittered glass, ground up glass for it, or plastic in some cases. Halloween postcard here. This one went for 30 bucks plus shipping. It's been up for a little while. I run into this one fairly often. It's one of the more common ones, I should say. It's still a very nice postcard. This, again, a dollar purchase. Now, photos in general I buy a lot of, and this is just a lot of five, I think, or four different photos. It has sailors on a specific ship that you can tie it down to. It's a nice, interesting shot of the galley, so $24.50 on these little tiny photos. Now, I sell photos constantly, all the time. Here's another sale here. This is an 8 by 10 $21.39 for this one. Happy with it as well. I've got about a quarter, 50 cents, at the very, very most into this. The lot where I got this one at, I've already paid for probably like 20 times over because I've sold so many out of it. Now, labels I do extremely well with pretty much any type, and we sell multiples almost every single day of the week. Here's a roller skating label, $24 and some change on this one here. I sell a lot of these. On average, I'm selling one or two every single day of the week or more. Some days, one person might come in and buy five or ten of them. Another one, $24.15 on this one here. Same basic principle. It's just a paper label. It was glued or gummed on the back at one point also. Now, this is an interesting one, and I have another one of these up after this one sold already. I've sold probably six or seven of these. Now, this is some sort of crate label or advertising label that would have went on a box from the 1876 Centennial World's Fair. So it's an interesting, honestly unique piece. It is engraved, but these do show up. Sometimes you'll see people that cut these up and sell even pieces of this. It did sell for $52. Now, this is a bigger piece, literally for a wooden crate. It's always best to have them unattached to something. Usually, they'll be damaged. There is some issues with this as well. If this was a mint copy of this, it would have been about $125 or better. I've never run into one of these that wasn't tattered to some extent. Again, just because of the size. Usually, they were folded at some point and shoved in something to haul back to wherever they were from. So, interesting piece here. Now, here's a fine example of an early label, circa 1790s. This is a shaker piece, and you can actually look this up to date this very specifically by how it's signed on there. It's DM. Those are his initials. Now, this was purchased in Mississippi when we went there, I think, a Christmas or two ago. We purchased this at an antique mall for, I think, a dollar or two at that point. Uh, I hadn't a clue until I got home and dug into this one what it was from. It's been up for a little while since that point. But again, the right person was on, somebody who collects this stuff and never had a clue to look on eBay for them. So sure enough, once he saw it, he did buy it right off the bat. So he was on at the right time. He happened to see this specific item. That's why I leave a lot of stuff running for a very long length of time. I'm not really worried anymore at all about the fees based on how eBay is doing it. But a nice sale here either way you go. Now, here's another example of some of our philosophy. Now, I've got three labels from the same Moore McCormick line that I purchased at different times. Three different labels. I waited and listed them at the same time. The right person came along and bought all three. Now, had I just listed one at a time or as I got them, it might not have been as prevalent to sell them that quickly. It may have been a staggered out long time sale on those. It's always best to market a whole bunch together to drum up more interest as well as you can get some better sales all at the same time. So this person bought this one here. They also bought this one here. And they bought this one here also, all at the same time. Right person, right time of the day. Now, plow equipment, farming equipment, anything along that line does very well. And this one has the German Kaiser on it from about 1880-ish, probably mid to late 1880s. It's sold basically because of who's on it, as well as what it's for, farming implementation stuff. All that stuff does very well, as you can see. 
Now here's an item I paid a dollar for, and these are four long rollout sheets for a wallpaper border that would go around a child's room or something along that line. It's kind of Dr. Seuss-ish to some extent. Very unique, very interesting. Hadn't seen anything like it. I just threw a price up there. It's been up for a little while. It ended up selling for the $45 ship, so I'm very happy with that. Again, it's a dollar. I had no idea what it was, but for a dollar, I will sure as heck take a chance on something this bizarre, this interesting to begin with. As you can see, it's very unique, very different, kind of spacey, trippy kind of thing. Magazines as well. If the magazine is a title that will sell, I do invest in big bulk lots of some. Fly Tire is for Fly Fishermen gives examples it shows you how to do some of the tying and things like that so these pretty much sell used or not so most of these sorts of titles i do track down and buy if you're looking pay attention to the title and look them all up before you invest money in a whole bunch of magazines this one was a no-brainer i think i paid a dollar for the entire stack quarter piece 20 cents whatever they were i don't really remember but i know it was pocket change for what i got back out of it as you can see and of course the purchaser the buyer actually paid for shipping also and sheet music goes very well. Now, this is tied to Yokohama, Japan. Nice, very well done illustration on the cover also. Most of these sell constantly. This is a freebie. I didn't pay a dime for this one as well as thousands and thousands of other ones. I've actually got a video showing me picking that up, and you can see me with the massive quantity that we got from that lot. But all of this stuff just takes the right person online at the right time for it to sell for us. It's just that simple. I don't mind letting stuff sit for a long time because I have nothing into it. And again, with eBay's listing fee deduction with the zips, the zero insertion fees that we got, it's nothing to list any of this stuff for us and for most people who have even a smaller size store. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Clothing left in fitting rooms is easy pickings for shoplifters who just wear them over or under their own clothes. Check fitting rooms frequently for merchandise left inside. This man appears interested in a suit. His companion is even more interested. Female boosters can take three or four suits, including hangers, in one motion, holding them between their legs with comparative ease. Sometimes a partner will enter the store first, select the suits to be stolen, and put them on the end of the rack for easy identification by the confederate who will do the stealing. 